Okay, so why publishers want to censor Jordan, censor Jordan Peterson? I saw this one um, about why you shouldn't have white friends, but it just seems like some opinion piece has probably been misconstrued, and I just can't be bothered with that kind of nonsense. But I am interested in Jordan Peterson stuff, so I'll watch this one. So for those of you that don't know, um, Isaac Butterfield is a comedian from Australia um, who goes into the like anti-SJW shtick on YouTube quite a lot. You know, you can kind of go through and see. So like Star Wars introduces a transgender Jedi. And then there's other stuff, which is like exploring a basement. Uh, you know, all this kind of stuff. Let's go into a haunted basement with him. I can, no, we can't. I can't do it. Sorry. Sorry. I, I, I'm more interested in the Jordan Peterson. 11, 11 rules that all need men to learn. Men need to learn. Maybe I should watch that at some point, but I'm watching a bunch of Red Pool stuff, so... Let's get into this. Okay? You ready for this? Three years ago, I went through... Let me just make it full screen. We'll get into it, okay? Let's uh, let's turn it... Is it cranked up? Is, is it max volume? I think it's... Yes, it's up. It's up there. Three years ago, I went through a very confronting time in my life. It Turn was also a very conflicting time. You see, my career was taking off. I went from a thousand subscribers on Yeah, YouTube. sorry, sorry. This is this is this could be based on a false premise. So why publishers want to censor Jordan Peterson? What what ideally we would want to find out first is do publishers want to censor Jordan Peterson? So I'm not sure this could be based on a false premise potentially like because if publishers don't want to censor Jordan Peterson, then it's a stupid question. But we'll get into it and see if he maybe lays it out. We'll see, okay? To 100,000, I went from selling three tickets to a stand-up show to selling out all over the country. Everything was going amazingly. However, at the same time, I was struggling. I started having panic attacks, I had extreme anxiety, and I had developed this form of PTSD. It was all surrounding this rare form of epilepsy that I had developed in my early 20s, and it had gotten worse over that time period. Now, that controlled me for a long period of time. Thankfully, through a lot of hard work and changes in my own life, I was able to get through that to where I am now. I still have my issues but I'm working on them. But it was this experience that made me realize that we all face immense challenges throughout our lives. Another person who went through something like this and succumbed to the very catacombs that are your mind was Dr. Jordan Peterson. Here we go. Famous author, psychologist, and professor of psychology. To cut a long and menacing story short, Jordan Peterson was at the rise of his fame. He was huge. World tours sold out shows. And in that period of time, in fact, just when this photo was taken of himself. Hey, look. He met Jordan Peterson. Oh my God. What is this? Jordan Peterson looks rough. Jordan Peterson looks really rough. I think he's about to say, but this must be before he went into hospital. And me, Jordan Peterson's wife was diagnosed with a deadly cancer. Something that obviously rocked his entire world. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to find out more, the links are below uh, to videos that Michaela Peterson has done, friend of the channel, and uh, Jordan himself has done as well, as well as his wife explaining this in great detail. But this is basically the dot points. The horrific diagnosis of Jordan's wife led him to this horrific downfall into a pit of anxiety, one that could only be controlled with a strong dose of benzodiazepines. Now he then became addicted to these and these are extremely addictive indeed. I was prescribed these myself, I didn't take them and after learning all this, thank fuck I didn't. The story goes that the only way that Jordan was able to get out of this horrendous addiction was to go and be put in a coma in Russia. That's how hectic this situation. Thanks very much for the bits, Astros Tom. Appreciate it. I don't. I don't know about this Russia stuff. The idea that you had to go to Russia to get treated, it all seems very, very fucking unusual. The whole, like, the whole story about what happened with Jordan Peterson is so weird. 
condition was. Thankfully, Jordan Peterson's wife's diagnosis improved, but when asked about the withdrawal symptoms that Jordan Peterson was suffering from, she said he is taking anti-seizure medication and cannot type or walk unaided. Thankfully, somehow, Dr. Peterson overcame all of this, and it is a credit to himself as a man to do that. He sought medical intervention, something that we all should do if we need it. Somehow throughout all this, he even wrote his new book, and I will leave a link to that down below that you can get if you're in Australia to pre-order it now. The reason I made this video though is to really comment on the absolute garbage that came from the far left wing pieces of shit on Twitter and the left leaning media that went above and beyond when it comes to being a huge piece of shit. They attacked his declining mental health, they attacked him for not being able to- Okay, listen, can I be fucking real for a second here, okay? Can I be real for a second? I agree that attacking Jordan Peterson um, for what happened is is not in the best taste. However, however, this is extremely hypocritical coming from this motherfucker. Coming from this motherfucker who makes distasteful jokes about things literally all of the fucking time all of the fucking time right and jordan peterson himself like isn't exactly a paragon of virtue when it comes to being a decent human being but me personally me personally I, I didn't like the way that people attack. I don't like the basis on which people attack Jordan Peterson. I think you can point out hypocrisy and, and you can say, you know, he's got this book. Of, you know, he, is, he essentially advocates for this bootstraps type philosophy. And point out the contradictions there. But to go after him for the addiction of stuff, I don't know. Not really, not really my cup of tea. Hey! Hey, Johnny Scarlett, thanks so much for the raid. I really appreciate it. Welcome, everyone. Hope you're good. Good to see you here. What's this on the left? Wait, hang on a second. This has got one like. This has got one like. I know I'm late to the party, but this Jordan Peterson's daughter, ooh boy, all beef diet, batshit, on behalf of the parents, thanks for all of them eating disorders, lady. What's, what's this got to do with his addiction? And this one here, this is this, this top one isn't even about Jordan Peterson. Kermit as a new girlfriend, good. His last one was a domestic abuser. This is an um, allegory for Jordan Peterson and his daughter. Profound, really. Wait a second. These aren't even that... They're not even really mocking him for, like... They're not even really mocking, like, Jordan Peterson for his addiction and stuff. These are just kind of like... I don't know. Is he really this upset by these? Fucking... Is he really this upset? This fucking uh, comedian, this edgelord comedian is really upset by these very tame references. What? What did he say about these? Let me listen again. Absolute garbage that came from the far left wing pieces of shit on Twitter and the left leaning media that went above and beyond when it comes to being a huge piece of shit. They attacked his declining mental health. They attacked him for not being able to help himself. They decline. wait. Where's the attack for his declining mental health? And also, this is from December 2020. And also, this has got one like. Who is this creative candy person? Like, th this tweet is like... What did he do? Just name search? I don't fucking know. And it's about his daughter. Yeah, I don't fucking know why he's getting so upset by these tweets. But there we go. It is true that the right are the true triggered snowflakes, I guess. Although this guy probably doesn't say he's right wing, but you know. Yeah, anybody that criticizes Peterson is far Even though he wrote a self help book. Okay, what's if... this one? Replying to Cernovich Jordan Peterson is a shill, drug addict, student skirt chaser, 
McMartin preschool denier, suspicious meat only diet, trampy only meat eating, wackaloo, daughter misinformation agent, and what the worst, ran away to Russia when his wife got cancer and more. Terrible human. I mean, yeah, I don't really like this tweet personally, but who's this? J. Lewis Hayden. You can't even see how many fucking how much engagement it's got. Even though it's not really a self help book, but anyway, they wished he. What's this? Karma. This is from February 8th. February 8th. Jordan Peterson, oracle, oracle to gullible young men, preacher of macho toughness, and hectoring bully to snowflakes, is addicted to strong drugs and his brain riddled with neurological damage. I mean, yeah, I don't. I don't. I'm not a fan of that tweet. That's got a bit more, a bit more engagement. <sighs> what? But who is this? Who is um, Amir Ataran? Is he a far leftist? Is he one of us? <clears throat> At Amir. Oh no. Amir. Ataran. Who is this guy? Professor of Law and Medicine at the University of Ottawa. I mean, is this guy leftist? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> this one hasn't even got any engagement. Why do they always find the weirdest tweets? Yeah, left exactly right. Leftists are the folk we disagree with. Try refreshing. He looks like a Canadian lib. I don't fucking know. I g listen when they throw up these tweets. His first, death, they wished his family's death, and they just were general pieces of shit. But Life in the USSR. Sign my petition to have Jordan Peterson put back in a coma. 23 likes. 30 likes. These, this is from December, though. The National Post that tweet is a right-wing newspaper in Canada. What is going on here? They always find the weirdest tweets. But if there's one that takes the cake, it is the publication The Guardian. They have printed so many anti-Peterson stories that it is just ridiculous to go through them and sift through the shit. But I found one. And this was the one that I've never had more displeasure in reading. It's written by a dude called Nathan Robinson. Pitch it here, and obviously this man gets all the pussy in the world. Oh, Publishers this guy. are not obliged to give bigots like Jordan Peterson a platform. Firstly, whenever I read shit like Wait, this... Wait, hang on, hang on, hang on. Like Publishers are not obliged to give bigots like Jordan Peterson a platform. From the 3rd of December 2020. Nobody... Nobody has a human right to a lucrative book contract without regard for whether their opinions are sound or valuable. I mean, yeah, that's true, isn't it? Hey, thank you very much. Happy holidays to you too. Merry Christmas. Yeah, let's get a random, let's get a selection of random Twitter shitstones and call them left. And that was a random selection. I don't think I knew any of those people were. And like, I'm not meaning that as like who the like who Megalol thing. I just mean if you're going to show tweets, I would have thought you'd show prominent people or like people with a big platform or something like that. You know? Yeah, I know. Uh, yeah, Nathan Robertson. Yeah, I'm, I'm familiar with Nathan Robertson. Let's find out. Wait a sec. Why publishers want to censor Jordan Peterson? Is this on the back of anything? What's the title of this article? Publishers, publishers are not obliged to give bigots like Jordan Peterson. Let's have a look. Okay, what's this in reference to? Oh, right. Okay, I remember the story. So basically, some people expressed some frustration about the fact that they were going to publish it. So I think we were criticised over sensitive and woke. Did they actually cancel the book? Can anyone find out for me while we watch this video if they actually cancelled the book or if it's still being published? 
Jordan Peterson a platform. Firstly, whenever I read shit like this and people start talking shit about Jordan Peterson, a lot of people have said it about me being a fan or reading his books or having his daughter on my podcast. People really get upset about it and it's something I've never understood. I really think that people who would potentially not like Jordan Peterson, if they just listen to what he had to say rather than listening to fucking other nutbags about what they think about him, then they would not be able to form this opinion that he's a bigot or a transpho or a horrible person. I don't think any free thinking human being could form that opinion if they just listened to what he had to say. Oh but my Nathan God. Robin he's making the, you've got to go and go and listen to a hundred hours of Jordan Peterson lectures before you have an opinion on him, please. This dude is obviously like a big fan of Jordan Peterson, right? Like, this this is a very biased video. Johnson <laughs> goes full ham in this article. Let's uh, just check him out one more time. Here's some of the great pieces that he has written in the past. Riots aren't violence. Nice one. Your job is a miserable grinding dictatorship. Time for socialism. Media bias is okay. If it's honest. But this one did my fucking head in. This one that he wrote about Jordan Peterson. Publishers are not obliged to give bigots like Jordan Peterson a platform. Jordan Peterson, the Canadian psychology professor and lobster loving life coach. It's always strange when people use the lobster thing to discredit Jordan Peterson. If you don't know what it's about, the first chapter of the book 12 Rules for Life, and you should read it, is all about lobsters and how they form hierarchical structures. The chapter itself discusses in detail about things like the serotonin levels in lobsters increasing when they rise to the top of the hierarchical structure and decreasing when they fall to the bottom, much like humans do. The reaction of the lobster's body and the neurology of the lobster is very similar to humans. The brain shrinks and the emotional brain takes over. In fact, it would point to the idea that hierarchical structures are older than trees themselves. When people discredit Peterson or try to, when they call him Lobster Boy or talk about the lobsters and laugh about the lobsters, it just points to one thing. They haven't read the book, they don't understand what he was trying to say, they've got no fucking idea what's going on, and they're just basically listening to other people, second, third, fourth hand, and going, look at me, I know what's going on, Jordan Peterson's a bigot, and they act like a fucking fool. Peterson yeah, yeah, this is, uh, this is, you're right, you're right, Dazzler. This is big parasocial energy here. Just going full ham on defending Peterson. Like, I think he's just upset that people poke fun at him because of the lobster thing. Yeah, it's like a tantrum. Peterson is not a neurologist or a biologist, and he's been repeatedly told that his nonsense about lobsters is completely wrong. Yeah, exactly. It isn't to discredit him, no. It's mainly just to pick the piss out of him because people think it's so fucking funny that he's raving about fucking lobsters. Yeah, even if it made sense, it'd be funny. Happy Boxing Day to you too. I don't know. This is so, so odd to me. It came to public attention after refusing to use the preferred pronouns of transgender people. No, no, Robbo. That never fucking happened. Peterson said countless times that if you want to be called a man, he will call you a man. If you want to be called a woman, he will call you a woman. Why? Because that's the polite thing to do. But you shouldn't be reprimanded. You shouldn't be put in jail. You shouldn't be fined if you don't do that. It shouldn't. How many people have been since Bill C-16 came into effect? How many people have been in Canada? How many people are in jail in Canada because they've not used the correct pronouns? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Good thing that's not literally happened not once. Yeah, I know. I know. The only lucky way for saying you're English. The reason that people okay, so that the way the way that um that was presented in the article was maybe a little bit not quite right, but the reason people were frustrated with Jordan Peterson and accuse him of being transphobic is because of the abject fear mongering that he did about that bill he went round to everyone that would fucking listen and tell him it was compelled speech and they were going to lock you away for not using the correct pronouns and he was talking about how he's not going to do it and if they lock me away i'm going to go on hunger strike and all this fucking wacky shit and it, none of it fucking came to pass the way he said it would
Yeah, I know. We're still talking about Bill C-16. What the fuck? Not be dictated by law and your freedom should not be put in jeopardy just because you don't make a particular sound with your face. The polite thing to do is use those pronouns and that's what I would do, but it shouldn't be dictated by law. He has a new book coming out and some of the staff at Penguin Random House Canada were reportedly not pleased with the company's decision to publish it. These pricks broke down in tears. You fucking children. When the publisher announced that it would be bringing out Peterson's Beyond Order, 12 More Rules for Life, a sequel to his 2018 bestseller, 12 Rules for Life, management received dozens of complaints. A book that has helped millions of people worldwide could be in jeopardy because of dozens of people. The same, well not the same, but a very similar thing happened to me when I was doing my stand-up. Is, is it in jeopardy though? Sorry, did anyone check? Yeah, you're right, Amazable Skeptic. It just added trans people to the Human Rights Act. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, no. I, I remember at the time, because because there were people that were going around scaremongering about it. Um, and even like a bunch of lawyers in the, Canada had to come out and release a letter and say, what everyone's talking about is wrong. It doesn't do what all these people are saying it's going to do. Here's the facts of it. Exactly, Boxu. How is it in jeopardy? Uh, because some people at the publisher are complaining about it. I, I don't know, it seems a bit far-fetched. I'll, I'll be proven wrong though. If, so, if there's evidence that it's been cancelled or something because of this, then yeah, you know, we could, we could talk about that. But as it stands, it seems like it's still being published. Peterson fans believe as of hate speech, laws didn't exist to the conception of C-16, yeah, true show last year and for next year in Canberra right I had the show booked we were ready to go put the tickets on sale and two people complained with this article here that I was a big piece of shit grossly inappropriate comedian to perform at Canberra which is the university well who knows my show nearly got stopped because of two people bitching and moaning about shit they don't have any idea about two fucking idiots. Thankfully, the Canberra University came to their fucking senses. We did the show. There were 700 people there and they all had a marvellous time. And I'll see you motherfuckers next year. People are gonna find... Well, what are you fucking complaining about then? What are these fucking... Listen, I'm actually someone that is concerned with like deplatforming, right? Like, it's a complicated issue. And I've got my criticisms of some of the strategies that are involved in the target sometimes, and I don't always know if it's the best thing to do. But the fact that, like, he wasn't even deplatformed, he still got to go and perform. Like, what the fuck are you complaining about then? What the fuck? It's so ridiculous. It's so frustrating. You know, I'd love it if we could have a, a genuine conversation. You know, a genuine, a genuine thing about like this kind of stuff. I saw him tweet, please leave the Penguin employees alone. Who said that? Yeah, I almost got canceled. These people, these people are so fucking desperate to be part of the cool club that they talk about times that they were almost canceled. And like, <laughs> it's so sad things offensive. If we could tail everything in life to two people, to 20 people, to 50 people, then we'll never get anything fucking done. Anyway, back to Robbo's piss poor article. At a company town hall meeting, some employees were reportedly in tears as they described how Peterson had radicalised people in their lives. Radicalised! Are you mad? Predictably, the staff who complained were criticised as being overly sensitive and excessively woke. I can't imagine why. And I'll also add hypocritical because Penguin Publishing published fucking this. Where's your town hall meeting about that, people? It has standards and it's reasonable for them I mean, wait, hang on a sec. Yeah, that's like a, a historical piece of um, literature, right? Like, that's like... <laughs> And it's not like, listen, I'm going to be real with you, okay? I don't think I don't think Hitler's going to care too much about, um, you know, whether or not his book is published by someone or not, because he's fucking dead. 
Mine Calf by Penguin is a strong preface. <laughs> what does it say? Like, that, listen, you're in for some yikes. Before reading this, just be warned, you're in for some yikes. Do you want one for Peterson? But yeah, I just, I'm just like bamboozled by this. What are we actually complaining about here? Is, is the publisher actually wanting to censor him or some employees complaining about it? Has the book, is the book still coming out under Penguin or whatever it is? What the fuck is this? Heavily edited as well, going off the Nazis I've seen complain about it. Oh my God. History of Nazism explained it. Employees to argue that Peterson does not meet those standards. After all, he suggested that gay marriage might be a plot by cultural Marxists. That women wearing makeup in the workplace is sexually provocative. Okay, well he actually said in the video that you linked, Robbo, that it is designed for sexual provocation. What's the purpose of makeup? Some people would like to just put on makeup. Why? To, 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 I don't know why. Why do you make your lips red? Because they turn red during sexual arousal. That's why. <laughs> why do you put rouge on your cheeks? Same reason. I mean, look. How about high heels? They're there to exaggerate sexual attractiveness. Women have invented makeup to look more attractive. <laughs> That's so funny. It's so funny the way he says it as well. Okay? Now, whether that is sexual provocation, I don't really agree with that certain and sentiment. Fact, but what it is, is people are trying to look more attractive. That's why... And listen, what it actually is, why do women do this? Women don't do it because it's like, oh, it's sexually provocation. They do it because they're socially conditioned to do it. Right? Women are socially conditioned to fucking wear makeup. Men are socially conditioned to put fucking gel in their hair, where the fuck it is. Do you know what I mean? These things are all things that we're conditioned to do by society. So the fact, the idea that, oh, why do, why do women wear makeup? To, because it's sexually provocation. That's just wrong. That's just a completely incorrect. Right? You've got to understand. And this is where it gets difficult, right? Because, because obviously Jordan Peterson has a very much an individualistic perspective and outlook on things. So he looks at the personal responsibility of stuff. So... He'll look, he'll look to, you know, <clears throat> that sort of ideology. But, but to me, it's far better explained in, in that, right? <clears throat> and it's very true what's being said in chat as well, right? It's not just about being conditioned. There's an obligation to as well, right? And there is this weird thing that we have in, you know, the UK, the US, maybe other places too as well, um, where... If a woman doesn't wear makeup, it's seen as a bad thing. They're seen as ugly or they're seen as they've not prepared. They've not come in looking right. Or, do you know what I mean? Men have it to a lesser degree. It's not quite as severe. But, you know, if I went into work with a messy beard and, like, fucked up hair and, like, I worked in an office that needed a suit and I had, like, a t an open button shirt on, you know, that would be, like, what the fuck are you doing? Do you know what I mean? But women have got it a lot more, uh, more, lot more challenging when it comes to how they have to look. They're supposed to look just to appear in the world, you know. So yeah, what Jordan Peterson saying there is just fucking batshit nonsense, basically. <laughs> but look, look, I'll be honest. The way that the the way that it's been written in those articles isn't the best. But you know, whatever. It's an opinion piece, I expect. So I don't know. I just <laughs> so weird to me, like. Getting fucking into it with these opinion pieces like this. People cake their face in fucking makeup because their head is fucked. Women do it because they want to look better than the other girls. They want to look more attractive, just like the other girls. Which I guess is... And why? Why do they want to do that? Did they just wake up one morning and magically go, Do you know what? I want to look prettier than other girls. Or, you know, did they... Uh... Did they sort? Are they born with something in their genes that means that they're going to go on to wear makeup? Like this is my issue with this sort of analysis. It doesn't dig deep enough to ask the why to why people do the things that they do. You know. He left the gay marriage point alone. Yeah. No, of course not. <sighs> Them trying to look more attractive for the sexual yeah. part. No, Jordan, you're right. He is intellectually incurious. Basically, this is what happens, right? And this is something that I talk about is, you know, you need to you need to get to the root of things and you need to find you need to understand why people do or believe the things that they do. It's not easy it's not as easy as going, "Oh, they want to just be sexually attractive." You've got to ask why that is. 
that's the more interesting conversation and the more interesting path to go on. But the thing is, when you really dig into why people act the way that they act, you basically end up arriving at like a lot of leftist positions. It's just the way it is, you know? Because by asking that, you understand how society is constructed in such a way as to guide us down these different routes that align with the um, socio-economic paradigm that we exist in, right? So it does kind of lead to leftism. <clears throat> when you really truly start to understand and do a sociological like analysis of why things are the way they are and why people act the way they do. Yeah, if you dig deep enough, of course. How can you not? You know, how can you not? When when you really understand. Don't make me tap the material analysis sign again. Yeah, I know, but it's so it's so frustrating, right? Because these people are all the same. There's no material analysis whatsoever. And and the thing is, like, in some ways, I mean Isaac Butterfield's got quite a large platform, but but like this is this is pure ideology. This is this is just liberalism. This is just fucking liberalism, you know, that's deep rooted into us. You know? So anyway, sorry to go off on one, but I love talking about that stuff. ...that they might want to have, so maybe it is, I don't fucking know. It's a very tough subject. But to go out there and say that Jordan Peterson is a piece of shit because he mentioned this, it's fucking weird, Robbo. He also suggested that trans women aren't women because they aren't capable of having babies, that women can't handle the truth, that transgender activists are comparable to mass murdering Maoists. He peddles debunked scientific theories and dangerously dodgy diets. I've gone through his work myself, wow, you're amazing, and shown that he is a crackpot. Well, saying that trans women aren't women because they can't have babies is scientifically true. It's not nice. It's true. Robert says that he mentions Wait, that women... Wait, but that's, that's not... That's so absurd. It's, because what about w women that were assigned a female at birth, right? What about what about people that were assigned female at birth? That, that, like cis women. What about cis women that can't have babies for, for a medical reason? Are they not women? That doesn't make any fucking sense. Yeah, exactly. Apparently, women over women aren't, aren't aren't women over sixty aren't women. Women that have had any procedure to remove their womb um, or any condition that affects their ability to have babies or stops them having babies. Apparently, they're not women either. Um, yeah, postmenopause. Forget that. They're not women. Okay. Yeah, we're conflating sex with gender again. Can't handle the truth. He's talking about an interview that Peterson gave, talking about lectures that he doesn't mention particular things. <clears throat> that in some subjects, people just can't deal with that truth. And when Robbo says that, oh, he's talking about women can't handle that. Well, in a lot of cases, these people who take these studies, like women's studies or social dusters, fucking whatever, they can't handle the truth. They freak the fuck out. They riot in the streets. <laughs> Debunked scientific theories. He's talking about lobsters again. Dodgy diets. Well, he's talking about the carnivore diet, a diet that a lot of people have had success with. And as far as Peterson being a crackpot, it sounds like you're the one calling the kettle black crackpot. Yeah. When Bankaj Mish Mishra wrote a critical review of Peterson's work in the New York Review of Books, Peterson called Mishra a prick and said he'd happily slap him. Well, he did say that, but he also said that because... Mishra called Peterson a fascist. Yeah, the things he says are often false, prejudiced, and dangerous. Shall we go back to this article that you wrote about riots not being violence? What have we just seen in America? It is important to make this distinction clear because many conservative claims about being censored actually just amount to demands that their opinions be elevated far beyond their worth. that evidence-free, bigoted speech be given any prestigious platform it demands, with criticism seen as proof that the critics are tolerant. None of this is about criticism of Jordan Peterson's work. This man, Robbo, whoever the fuck he is... With his I, I love the fact that what he's done is he's, he's um, you know, crafted this, crafted this around these tweets. Oh, look at the, look at the fucking left going after Jordan Peterson for nothing, right? And then he's talking about this person writing these articles. And then he's saying, oh, there's no, these people aren't criticizing Jordan Peterson. Well, why don't you go to someone that is and engage with their points? Why don't you go and, why don't you go and look at Slavoj Žižek's criticisms of Jordan Peterson and respond to them? Well, we don't know why, because he'd get fucking blown the fuck out. He wouldn't know what he was doing. Imagine this dude trying to wrangle with fucking Žižek's, you know, 
perspectives on Jordan Peterson. In fact, he'd probably get on with Zizek for his position on the N-word. <laughs> he'd probably he'd probably get on with Zizek. For, for, I'm, I'm a big Zizek stan, personally. I like Zizek a lot. The title is complete clickbait. Yeah, absolutely it is. Absolutely it's clickbait. Zizek is a bit meandering and complex. Yeah, I agree. But yeah, no, I definitely... Um, but yeah, my, my general point is this, right? It's like picking the lowest hanging fruit. Do you know what I mean? And and yeah, you're absolutely right. This title is clickbait. Oh my God, whose emote is that? You're a fucking hilarious bloke, but chainsawing these kind of videos is why I limit on presence here. These people just make me so angry. Yeah, I understand, Ricky. Listen, it's a lot of what I do. I get that it's not for everyone, but, uh, you know, appreciate the uh, the feedback. Um, Jordan Peterson's um, intention is to misrepresent the bill, is to get harmed to trans people. Yeah, I know. <sighs> okay, anyway, sorry, let's continue. Fucking shit haircut. He demands that you listen to him in his weird socialist ways. He's attacking Jordan Peterson's work without giving it any credit for actually what it is. It says that he's gone through Jordan Peterson's work. Have you, Robbo? Have you really? Have you just skimmed through it or have you dived deeply into it? It seems that you've just heard someone else talk about it and you thought, oh, here's my opportunity to go out and get a bit of notoriety about myself. This is why free speech is so important. Giving into people's delicate sensibilities to people who probably jerk off over Che Guevara posters, bending the knee to them is only going to end up in a just awful world. Controlling ideas, hey. controlling reading. Ricky, thanks so much for the sub, I really appreciate it. Controlling thoughts, dictating what you can say and what you are not allowed to say is reprehensible. And after all, that's what Jordan Peterson fought for in the first place. Ladies and gentlemen, be a good motherfucker. Peace in the Middle East. Let me know what you think down below. And I'll see you all very soon. Keep it moist. Toodaloo. Au revoir. Bye. Yeah, that was just a mess of parasocial shit. Someone attacked his parasocial daddy, so he went after them. Like, I don't know. Seems kind of silly to me to, to invest yourself so heavily into someone like that. I'm sorry, I couldn't stop showing at the Pickle Rick plushie. The thing is, it is complicated, right? Because, like, you know, the whole freedom of speech thing. You haven't watched all 5,000 hours of Jordan Peterson's actually you can't judge him. Yeah, because it is true. Okay, whilst it's true that no one is owed like a book deal, you know? It's, it's, it's complicated. It's complicated. But the thing is, the reality of the video, aside from, aside from like thinking about deplatforming and stuff like that and its effectiveness and whatever, why publishers want to censor Jordan Peterson? Oh, he read the book. He read the book. Okay. But it's like, who's trying to censor him? His his book's coming out, right? What's it called? More Rules for Life. Is that it? More Rules for Life. Who's publishing it? Penguin Books. Wait. You can, who's, who's censoring who now? It's still, you can pre-order it. It's not even censored. What was what he talking about? A few people complained when they announced that they were publishing it, that worked for the publisher. That was it. That was fucking it. And guess what? Guess what's so funny? Guess what's so funny about this all as well, right? Guess what's so fucking funny about it, okay? Listen, these employees, they are just expressing their own free speech, right? So what, is he suggesting that like these people can't have their own free speech and they've got to just go along with whatever the company wants? <laughs> They're just doing their free speech and complaining about it. Jordan Peterson wants to publish a book. People are saying I don't like it. What's the problem here? I thought, I thought, I thought you liked free speech, buddy. I thought you liked free speech. And what this shows, what this fucking shows, is that these people, okay, 
they don't care about free speech in the way that I genuinely do. I'm concerned with free speech, you know, and I, I think it goes beyond just governments. And I think these big tech platforms and stuff, we know we need to be thinking about this stuff. I'm pr pretty consistent on it. These people don't want free speech in the same way that I want free speech. What they want is freedom from criticism. And they want people like Jordan Peterson to be able to just go and publish their book without it being questioned, without it being investigated, without it being interrogated. They want to just be able to do whatever it is that they want to do without being critiqued. But that's not how it works. So for example, my position on jokes is that you should be able to tell whatever joke you want in the capacity of being like a comedian or whatever, or on social media, whatever it is, okay? You should be able to tell whatever joke you want to without being impeded by the law. However, the flip side of that is if you tell a joke, you're judged by the court of public opinion. So if you tell a joke that people don't like and you get criticised for that, as long as it's criticism and it doesn't get to the point where you're getting death threats and stuff, obviously I'm against that, then that's just criticism. Everyone's using their free speech. It's a good system. You tell a joke, people like it and they laugh at it. They don't like it, they don't laugh. They don't like it so much they complain about it. That's how it fucking works. The cycle goes round and round. It's so frustrating. It's so frustrating. I feel like there's, I feel, I just feel like this conversation is so fucked, you know, and everyone's so polarized about it and we can't have a genuine conversation about it. And then you've got dumb fucks like this complaining about people using their free speech while saying free speech is important. It's a total contradiction. And it also speaks to the points that he was making earlier in the video where he was complaining about people joking about Jordan Peterson whilst he himself makes extremely controversial jokes all the fucking time. He made a fucking joke about Muslims in the in the um, aftermath of the uh, Christchurch shooting, he made a joke about that. Very controversial. Do I support his right to make that joke? Yes, hundred percent. Go ahead and make that joke. But if you play with fire and you get burnt, that's the fucking consequences. If you tell a controversial joke and you get criticised for it, that's just how it is. Do you know what I mean? So by the same token. I don't think there's anything wrong with criticising people that were joking about Jordan Peterson. But the idea that you would, like, complain about that whilst you're making controversial jokes yourself, it just seems so inconsistent to me. Do you know what I mean? And the fact he was dredging up the most fucking unremarkable tweets you could ever fucking imagine as well. Jesus. Anyway. I think I've said all I've got to say about this. Um, dumb video. Um... Pretty hypocritical and very clickbaity. Free speech for me, but not for thee. Exactly. That's it.